Sierra Gordo is a ghost town in Southern California between Mount Whitney and Death Valley. And there's no running water there. It's a big problem for the person who's trying to restore the town and preserve it for future generations. In order to create and sustain any sort of human settlement there, some sort of minimal viable water solution must be attained. We're going to look at one such model. The model I think is the most important to start with and that is rainwater collection. Precipitation falls in the desert, not as much as in other areas, however there is precipitation there. It's going to fall as rain or snow and that liquid water can be collected off the roofs it falls on. Without a gutter system, like we see in this clip, it will just fall to the ground and go into the water table eventually. We want to talk about how we can quantify the amount of water that could be collected off one of the buildings in Sierra Gordo. We also want to make sure this is legal in the state we're looking to collect in, which is California. So let's go ahead and talk about AB 1750 Rainwater Capture Act of 2012. This uh, assembly bill passed with a great majority in the state legislature almost 10 years ago uh, to this recording. And in general, this law makes it legal for folks to collect rainwater off their roofs. Now, there are some pros and cons with this legislation. We'll just start with the cons here. Uh, this legislation prevents folks from using pumps or a lot of mechanical devices to move water off the roof. Uh, so that's important to know. Uh, the other thing this does is it, on the pro side, it doesn't limit quantity or give a lot of specifics as what your setup has to look like. So given that information, um, we're going to look at designing a system that would hopefully fall within the definitions of this document here. So let's look and see if we can build a model on that. And if you want to see this document in more detail, it's linked in the description below. All right, so we're going to travel to this property using our Google Earth satellite image application. We're going to go ahead and zoom in, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the biggest building at the highest elevation. We want the biggest roof uh, because that's going to be the place where we're going to get, be able to collect the most water for the start of our project. You could add more of these in future phases. We want the highest elevation because we're not really going to be able to use pumps or anything that are electrical if we go by the letter of the law. So in this case, we want to go to a higher elevation where we can use gravity to feed down to our other buildings that we're living in. So now we're going to take some measurements here. So this is the Union Mine building. It's the biggest roof we can see on the satellite image. And if you watch the YouTube channel, Ghost Town Living, which you totally should, it's really awesome, you can see uh, some video of the explorations of the mines in here there's a shaft that goes down to 900 feet. So we're just going to measure uh, length and width of the longest part of this building and the widest part. And we're going to take those lengths or this length of 115 feet and we're going to put it on our spreadsheet for our formula here which is basically length times width times uh, depth, uh, the amount of water that falls. Uh, it's a pretty simple formula to model this. If you have a better one to suggest, please put it in the comments below. We can see if we can add a tab to the spreadsheet and model it out and make it better. Once again, our goal here is to create a model that shows how much rainwater we could collect off the biggest roof in this town in an effort to help with the 
broader vision of being able to support human settlement here once again. And you can't have a settlement without water. So for those of you who are curious, this is the exact formula we're going to use. Feel free to Google it and take a look at it if you want. It's pretty simple. Three variable equation to start with. So from the satellite images, we can get our first two variables, which are the length and width of the roof. Now we need to get our volume, or our height, which is going to be based on precipitation data. Now unfortunately, there's not a weather station that's publicly metering from the town of Cerro Gordo. So I went to the closest one I could, which is this airport in Lone Pine, and I pulled these values and put them in the sheet. After that, I went ahead and added 10% to them, uh, and 15% in the heavy precipitation months, just because I think that Cerro Gordo, based on the uh, YouTube videos I've watched, gets more precipitation being at a higher elevation, uh, closer to the um, the mountains than uh, the bottom of the valley. So for that reason, I just added a little bit more. So take it for what you will, and I'd also throw out if you know of a better place to get precipitation data uh, historically for the specific region of Cerro Gordo. Let me know in the comments below and we can model it and see how that improves our data set. All right, before we add our precipitation values in, I wanna talk about where I first saw rainwater collection systems used on homes, and that's in the Tahoe's Earthship community. I took a trip here in my university days. This is part of an environmental building class, and it was a very powerful experience. So Tahoe's New Mexico has an Earthship community. These homes uh, have rainwater collection systems on them, and they're in a desert region. So it's pretty interesting. They're also made with a lot of um, reusable materials and you can see a bit of a water system there so a lot of glass bottle art as well where they're taking what would be a recyclable and reusing it indoor greenhouses are also common in these structures another point i want to make about the water problem at cerro gordo is that there's no easy solution to make water work like it does in a urban area where you just you're piped into the domestic water supply for the city and they send you a bill every month for how much you use so that's not trivial so we got to think outside the box and look at where this has been done before and works like the Tahoe's Earthship community and try and replicate that so I, I, I see this as a pretty good um, tool for the toolbox. It's definitely not the only solution, but it's uh, one worth exploring and I think one worth uh, doing if it's um, viable. So let's continue on to our model here. Okay, back in our spreadsheet here, you can see that I've input our precipitation values for Lone Pine for the year. And that's in column D. I've also added our uh, best guess at how much more rainfall, let's call that precipitation, in Sierra Gordo that falls and then added those together. I'm going to go ahead and total these up to in the bottom column so we can see our annual values. So annually, this is definitely a desert region, Lone Pines, and even with this small amount of rain, we can collect a lot of water. So 20,000 gallons a year about, if we divide that by gallons per day, we're at 56 gallons per day, rounding up for easy numbers. So let's look at the budget for this project. Take this with a grain of salt. I've never done a project like this before. I'm just trying to create a model so that there's an idea of what it would take to get this done financially. So we got to start with our collection vessel, which is a, this will be our water barrel. Uh, this one holds 15,500 gallons. So it wouldn't hold, if you didn't drink anything, it wouldn't hold as much as you need, but assuming you're pulling from this water at um, 55 gallons a day, or say 40 gallons a day, this should definitely meet your needs. Uh, it is expensive though. This is a $20,000 unit and it's 12 feet wide if we look at these specifications. All these details matter. 
because no one's going to haul this water tank up to Sierra Gordo from Keeler or Lone Pine or Bishop. It's going to have to be hauled up from the valley floor. And, you know, fortunately, Brett has a five ton military truck. If you took the sidewalls off of it, you should be able to put this tank on it. No problem. Haul it up there. Use some heavy equipment to set it up right outside the Union Mine where it can collect rainwater that falls off the roof there or melted snow. Now, one thing that came up for me is going through this process is the cost. So I knew it was going to be complicated like everything in a ghost town, but the, just the cost of the rain barrel alone was a lot higher than I expected. So, and my budget's pretty, pretty wide, uh, in, <laughs> in this, uh, spreadsheet you if you look at it i have like twenty thousand dollars under miscellaneous i still think it's a, something that's worth doing and should be done uh, i don't know where the money's going to come from maybe there's a very wealthy person watching this who would uh, work with brett in a way to make a project like this happen maybe they could fund it for the benefit of you know supporting the vision he has for the place long term in any case, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around. It's clean. It's cold. And that's what I call high quality H2O. Oh!